Hello friends, welcome to your channel Engineering and Technology for you for learning new topics. The topic for today is Inductive Bias in Machine Learning. The agenda for today is Introduction where we will introduce the inductive bias, the need for biases in learning generalization. So why we need the biases? Then the next is Forms of Inductive Biases and then we have the knowledge based inductive learning and then we will take an example of empirical risk minimization then what is overfitting we will study and lastly we will see the empirical risk minimization with inductive bias so let us start with the introduction the most extensively investigated learning task in machine learning or artificial intelligence is that of learning a single concept from examples. For example, one might consider the task of learning to distinguish tasty papayas from non-tasty papayas by looking at pre-classified examples of actual papaya. So in this task, we select the set of papayas attributes, for example, color and softness, and attempt to find a rule that distinguishes between tasty and non-tasty papayas expressed in terms of these attributes. So in the last video, we have discussed the formal method for this. The set of attributes selected determines the instance space used by the learning algorithm and the type of expression allowed in specifying the rule determines the hypothesis space used by the algorithm. The hypothesis space was the title for the last video. Those who have not watched the last video, kindly watch the last video so that you will understand what is hypothesis space. In any realistic learning application, the entire instance space will be so large that any learning algorithm can expect to see only a small fraction of its during training. So during training, the instance space will be small. So from this small fraction, a hypothesis must be formed that classifies all the unseen instance. If the learning algorithm performs well, then most of these unseen instances should be classified correctly. However, if no restrictions are placed on the hypothesis space and no preference criteria is supplied for comparing competing hypotheses, then all possible classification of the unseen instances are equally possible and no inductive method can do better on average than random cases. So this is the problem with a large hypothesis. So we have to have some restrictions on this. Hence, all learning algorithms employ some mechanism whereby the space of hypothesis is restricted or whereby some hypotheses are preferred a priori over others. So this is known as inductive bias. So this is what is the inductive bias. Then let us go to the need for biases in learning generalized. The learning involves the ability to generalize from the past experience in order to deal with new situations that are related to this experience. So this is what is the basic definition of machine learning. So the inductive leap needed to deal with new situations seems to be possible only under certain biases for choosing one generation of the situation over another. So if consistency with training instances is taken as the sole determiner of appropriate generalization, then a program can never make the inductive loop necessary to classify instances beyond those it has observed in the training. So only if the program has other sources of information or biases for choosing one generation over the other, can it non-arbitrarily classify instances beyond those in the training set. So main task of machine learning is to classify the instances beyond those in the training set. So that's why we need the bias. So here we use the term bias to refer to any basis for choosing one generation over another other than strict consistency with the observed training history. Then let us go to the forms of inductive bias. The most relevant form of inductive bias is the restriction of the hypothesis space to only concept that can be expressed in some limited 
concept description language for example concept described by logical expression involving only conjunction so this is one example of the inductive bias a still stronger bias can be obtained by also introducing a priori preference ordering of hypothesis for example by preferring hypothesis that have shorter descriptions in the given description so this is another bias then let us go to the knowledge based inductive learning often an inductive bias of learning system is expressed as a system preference for one hypothesis over another inductive bias is essentially for the development of a hypothesis with good generalization from a practical number of examples one type of inductive bias is knowledge of the task domain ideally a learning system can adjust its inductive bias to tailor its preferences for hypothesis according to the task being learned so as per the task being learned we can have the inductive bias so we define knowledge based inductive learning as a learning method that relies on domain knowledge to reduce the hypothesis space producing a more accurate hypothesis from a pure training exam then let us go to the empirical risk minimizing so we denote the domain space with x and a label space with y and we also need function for mapping the domain set space to the label set space so f here uh, uh, x corresponds to y so this is just a formal definition of learning task so as discussed in the last video learning algorithm receives as an input training set s sampled from an unknown distribution d and by some target function f and should output predictor hs that is x corresponds to the subscript yes emphasizes the fact that output predictor depends on yes so yes is the training set the goal of algorithm is to find hs that minimizes the error with respect to the unknown d and f the distribution and the function since the learner does not know what d and f are the true error is not directly available to the learner a useful notion of error that can be calculated by learner is the training error the error the classifier incurs over the training sample so here the formula for the error is given ls of h defined as i belongs to m it corresponds to h of xi that is not equal to yi divided by m so where m is 1 to m so the terms empirical error empirical risk are often used interchangeably for this error now since the training sample is snapshot of the words that is available to the learner it makes sense to search for a solution that works well on that data this learning paradigm coming up with the predictor h that minimizes ls of h is called empirical risk minimization or erm for short the empirical error is also sometimes called the generalization error the reason is that actually in most problems we don't have access to the whole domain x of the inputs but only our training subset s yes. so here you must understand that s yes, is a subset of the complete domain x so we want to generalize based on s yes. so also called as the inductive learning so this is what where we are introducing this inductive bias for the inductive learning then let us see the concept overfitting although the ERU rule seems very natural without being careful this approach may fail miserably demonstrate such a failure let us go back to the problem of learning to predict the taste of papayas on the basis of softness and color consider a sample as shown here in the figure so here we have the inner square and a large square assume that the probability distribution d is such that the instances are distributed uniformly within the large square and the labeling function f determines the label to be 1 if the instances is within the inner square and 0 otherwise for inner square it will uh, be labeling as 1 and 0 outside the inner square 
the area of the large square in the picture is 2 and the area of the inner square is 1. So let us consider the following predictor HS of x. So that is equal to yi if i belongs to m xi is equal to x. So this is one definition or it is equal to 0 otherwise. So within the inner square it will be considered as 1 otherwise it will be 0. No matter what the sample is ls of h of s is equal to 0 and therefore this predictor may be chosen by the ERM algorithm that is uh, it is one of the empirical minimum cost hypothesis no classifier can have smaller error on the other hand the true error of any classifier that predicts level 1 only on a finite number of instances is in this case 1 by 2 so ld hs is equal to 1 by 2 we found that the predictor whose performance on the training is excellent yet its performance on the true world is very poor so this phenomena is called as overfitting so intuitively overfitting occurs when our hypothesis fits the training data too well then let us go to the empirical risk minimization with inductive bias now let us apply inductive bias to the empirical risk minimization we have just demonstrated that ERM rule might lead to overfitting. Rather than giving up on the ERM paradigm, we will look for some ways to rectify. We will search for conditions under which there is a guarantee that ERM does not overfit, namely the condition under which when the ERM predictor has good performance with respect to the training data, it is also highly likely to perform well over the underlying data distribution. Common solution is to apply ERM learning rule over a restricted perspective. Formally, the learner should choose in advance a set of predictor. This is called a hypothesis class and is denoted by H, capital H. Each H belongs to capital H is a function mapping from X to Y for a given class H and training sample S. The ERM H learner uses the ERM rule to choose the predictor H belongs to H with the lowest possible error over S. So formally ERM H of S belongs to arc minimum of LS of H, where arc minimum stands for the set of hypotheses in H that achieves minimum value of LS of H over H. So by restricting the Learner to choosing the predictor from H, we bias it towards a particular set of predictors. Such restrictions are often called as inductive bias. So inductive bias are nothing but the restriction for the predictor. In other words, constraints of learning systems hypothesis space beyond the criteria of consistency with the training examples is called as inductive bias. For example, for the papaya test prediction problem, we may choose the class H to be the set of predictors that are determined by the axis aligned rectangles in the space determined by the color and softness coordinates. So this is the way we uh, try to do the bias. Now we will later show that ERMH over the class is guaranteed not to overfit. On the other hand, the examples overfitting that we have seen previously demonstrates that using S to be class of predictors that includes all functions that assign the value 1 to a finite set of domain points does not suffice to guarantee that ERM H will not overfit. So this overfitting we have to take care. Fundamental question in learning theory is over which hypothesis class ERM H learning will not result in overfitting. So intuitively Using a more restricted hypothesis class better protects us against overfitting but at the same time might cause a stronger inductive bias. So in this case the inductive bias will be stronger. So in this way uh, the inductive bias is applied for the machine learning. So with this we come to the end of this video. If you like the video press the like button, share with your friends and subscribe to our channel engineering and technology for you.
and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notifications for our future videos on this topic then thanks for watching have a nice day